Good morning, everyone. Welcome to an early edition of Joe Podcast. And by early, it's ten to ten. Um, normally, when you have a morning commitment, you get an early night's sleep. But I was up at two thirty a.m. watching Nintendo Direct, so you know that's me. Um, I have a very awesome guest this week. The first woman guest. This is Katie Lynch. Current, are you a midfielder for Bulldogs or? I was playing off the back line last season, um, but there is a bit of confusion about my position um, because I was drafted as a midfielder, played my first two seasons as a forward at Collingwood, and then came over to the Bulldogs as a backliner. So, You've so done a lot. There, uh, yeah, I forgive you for um, having a stab in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little Google search of you and so it said midfielder defender and so that's what i i sort of assumed there it's but <laughs> yeah there's a bit going on with positional stuff don't worry yeah awesome but where am i calling you from you are calling me from home <laughs> oh so, so you're in I'm melbourne just, okay um, yeah yeah i'm just in melbourne um not too far from from your place joe so oh excellent yeah strange how you know where i live but fun um, <laughs> seems so everyone I went did. To your 18. <laughs> you, you went to it, really? Absolutely, I went to it. It was a great night. I feel so bad for not remembering that. Whoopsies. How good am I as a nah, friend? you know what? Uh, I think I think you don't remember for um for other reasons. Maybe excellent. Um, too much to drink that night, Joe. <laughs> wow. Um, when I told my parents that I was having you on. They gave me this really interesting comment because it's really nice towards you, but really bad towards me. They go, oh, Joe, I might actually listen to this one. So you've impressed them enough to listen to me, but it means that they haven't been listening to the 10 other ones I've made. (laughs) Yeah, right, right, right. I see. Um, Something you probably, it's a bit of backhanded compliment there. I know, Um, right? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, I'll take it, Joe. I'll take it. Excellent. Um, I'm glad I'm not in your position. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess today we're going to talk all things AFLW, your career. Now, I know nothing about AFLW. In fact, I don't know too much about AFL normally. I know Dusty Martin and Gary Ablett, and that's basically (laughs) it. And you, of course. Um, Great, yeah. We went to school together and I remember, you know, feeling immense joy and proud with everyone else in that community when you got drafted because you were like 10th or 11th or something like that, right? Yeah, 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 um, 11th, yep. That's so cool. And, you know, we all, in the year above us, there was, oh my goodness, uh, there was Matt Rao below us and then there was... Richardson, what's his first name? Yeah, there you go, Ed Richards. Ed Richards, there we go. Um, I actually yeah. sent both of them a DM on Instagram to try and get them on. So, guys, can nice, you have a response? Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. That'd be great. Yeah, um, especially Matt Rao. What a career he's had in one year. Crazy, crazy. I'm telling you something about. Um, I hope and I hope Ed Richards get back gets back on the park. He was um. He was going really well. He until he um broke his leg. So hopefully the carry boys can um you know shake their injuries off and get back out there. That's absolutely it. So what got you into AFL? Yeah, so um I'll have to take you right back to when I was pretty little. So I would have been three or four maybe. Um so that was at the stage where my brother would have been down at Auskick. Um, tell me, you know what Auskick is? Jim. I know what Auskick is. My older great, brother great, did great. it. I don't think I did it. Perfect, perfect. Though. So they tried the first child and failed. Didn't bother with the second. Really? <laughs> no, I'm asking if that will happen with you. Oh, um, no. My older brother was actually really good at sports. Um, I'm just really moody and a bit prickish. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I, my yeah. parents listening are just like, yep, yeah, that's Joe. Yep, yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would have been three or four and my brother would have been playing 
on Skik at that stage. Um, so I think I was sort of just like, oh, I just want to do whatever my brother's doing kind of thing. Um, and I sort of, dad, mum and dad were happy to just throw me in to his Auskick. Um, and I had a little run around with, with him and his friends. And I guess from there on, it was just like lots of footy. Um, then I got into Auskick myself um, and then went into juniors, et cetera. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much where it all started. That's interesting. Auskick. You know, it was always boys and girls running around playing together even. And so from a very early age, at least from my perspective, girls and eventually now women playing AFL doesn't come across as strange or something new. It's been around for decades. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, it's so interesting that you say that because, like, for me, it was, like, so normal that I was playing footy from when I was um, and it was so normal that I was playing footy the whole way through but like hindsight's always such a funny thing because I look back now and I'm like I was like one of like two or three girls in every like every league I played in um, playing with boys and so I'm like hindsight's just like wow like I didn't even think that was strange, but now I look at it and I'm like, that's really strange. Like, why was I like the only girl out there? Um, and then it's even stranger that like, I can now like go watch my little sister play in a team of all girls. And um, there's so many little girls playing now um, in girls leagues rather than playing with boys, which I didn't have a problem with, but um, it's just like, so crazy to look back at it in that sense. It's, yeah, it's very interesting. So when did AFLW come into play? Or when did it, when was it created? Yeah, so it was, I'm pretty sure it was created in 2016, would have been the first season. Um, yeah. So I would have been in year, we would have been in year 10. Yeah. yeah, right. Which, it's interesting because it's like, come on, it took till 2016 to finally get a, Women's League of AFL. I'm so shocked by a lot of those things. We got our first Pride Club in uh, uh, 2018, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, our year 12. Was it? Yeah, okay. And so I'm just oh. like, why are so many things taking, obviously, sorry, a Pride Club at a private school versus AFLW oh, were very, very different. different. But just the representation, representation is yeah, going to be no. one of our most important generational qualities i think and so uh, yeah um it's interesting how it's taking at least with all the pc stuff i was gonna say crap but i was about to alienate half the audience um the, <laughs> with all the pc stuff going on it's surprising that these systems have taken uh, this long so uh, you're right about. it can continues to surprise me um and you're right, there's just so many little things that are, like, bobbing up now. And I'm like, this is just crazy, like, should have been happening years ago. Um, but, yeah, you're right, like, the Pride Club, even just, like, like Pride Awareness in general, I feel like. Um, and the other part of it that I often reflect on is, like, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know about you, but I felt like I was a bit oblivious in school um, to a lot of, um, representations that I should have been <laughs> aware of. I think um, I, d I definitely, so I do media um, at uni. And so, you know, we, we would do media in high school and we would look at films or photos and things like that. And people would make their short films as part of their folio. But then what media is actually about and what it actually means to people um, and how just representation itself, there's, it's a, such a wide umbrella that captures a lot of different ideas. Um, I heard recently in New Zealand there was a problem with a film and it related to the Christchurch shootings and how there's a white director, which some people have a bit of an issue with. I don't really want to recap what happened that night because it's kind of morbid, yeah, yeah. but... um. The Muslim community, some people in the Muslim community have been upset because it's also mainly about the reaction 
of that event, um, okay. which I guess, you know, artistically, I guess that's the approach they're trying to go for and trying to be fancy in that way or however mm. they want to do it. But, you know, I think Rose Byrne is the lead and good actress, actual whatever the word, yep. but it's it's just hard to really tell how it all works out. And so that's a case where the Muslim community have perhaps been misrepresented and it's upsetting. I, yeah, I, um, yeah, it's funny, funny hearing about that. And I'd agree, probably a mis- misrepresentation there. Um, but, it, that, but that's what the, like, I was, you and I were just talking about. Like, it's, it's stuff like that that I'm, that's just like, clearly still got work. Um, but, it has only really come to light in my life, at least in the last two, three years. Yeah. Well, and that's your um, footy career as well. So hundred percent. So when yeah. did, um, when did AFLW become a possibility on the table for you? Like, yeah. Um, I remember, um, so obviously I was aware of it in 2016. Um, but at that stage, it's, it came out, but I was sort of like, do I actually want to do that? Like, I'm, like I love footy and I I'm, know I'm, that I probably What do you I mean? You're an elite athlete. You were incredible. Why didn't you? <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the thing. It's just like, it was, and I know, oh, it's so strange to reflect on now because I'm like, I was genuinely in the mindset of, um, oh, the league will be shit. Like, it's, like, girls just playing footy. No one's going to care about it. Like, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I was caught up in this, like, weird world that I um, accepted, like, defeat in that sense. Um, and and then I remember watching the first game played against Carlton and Collingwood. And there was, it was a lockout crowd. Like there was like 25,000 people there. Um, it was hectic. And I was like, I was like, Oh, like maybe people do care about it. Like, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that leads me to, I just remember a specific conversation I was having. Um, I was actually playing tennis, um, with a few of the girls. Who, shout out know, to the tennis um, community. Woohoo. Good job. Shout out, shout out to tennis. Shout out to, um, Oh, no longer, but MCCQ, our school has now bought that lot. Did you know that, Josh? Um, Joe? Did you just they bought that? No, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I didn't know that. I actually don't really pay attention to um, Carey's comings and goings. So, No, fair enough. Um, Even though my younger anyway, brother yeah, graduated playing. last year. Yeah. <laughs> Did he? I didn't know you had a younger brother that age. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a middle child, um, which surprises a yeah, lot of people too. because... Like, they, they sort of, the middle child doesn't have much of an identity. They're sort of, you obviously do, but, you know, at work, no, no, at work, you. everyone thought I was the oldest brother, which is interesting because I was the youngest at my last workplace for most of my time there. And so when I first got hired, I was very much the younger brother of the team. But then when we got a bunch of new people in, and more recently, like this year, I have helped train a couple of people so I have more of an older brother figure but I was able to tap into it because of my middle childness does that make sense yeah <laughs> you, yeah yeah from what you've learned yeah yeah you took up the position you know yeah I don't no, like being good. I don't like being don't a big mean. brother it sucks and <laughs> uh, no, middle I, I don't mind middle as well because sometimes you sort of just like find the radar a little bit yeah exactly um, I don't mind at all you know you're playing um, tennis but yeah I was playing tennis. I was playing tennis with um, Tara Andrews, Gabby Hoban, um, Mimi Nichols. Um, so I was playing tennis with those girls. And um, I remember being like to Tara, um, like, yeah, there's like you know, like a women's competition now, like blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, should I, should I try and do it? Like, do I do it? And she was like, yeah, like, why wouldn't you do it? And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I don't know. And then we were just like, yeah, right, let's do it. So from like that that moment on, I was like, okay, like I'm gonna I'm gonna take the pathway and um, see if I can play in this league. 
When you were playing tennis with those girls, was it you versus Mimi, Gabby, and Tara, or did you have one of them on your side? <laughs> I think I had Tara on my side, and we might have been versus the other two. All oh, right, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great nice clip. Time. I don't know why it reminds me of this, but Serena Williams was on a Dude Perfect episode, and I've seen this. Oh my god! And they did this it's game where episode. they would get one guy, one of them at a time to try and receive a serve from her. (laughs) And they originally had, at the end, they had all five of them on trying to hit it back. Yeah, trying to, and they couldn't do it. (laughs) You know, I only learned recently, she's married to the co-founder of Reddit. Yes, she is. And she's got a child with him. Yeah, and he was wearing this, I don't want to get this shirt wrong because, um, like best, it's like it says best woman athlete, but woman was crossed out or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I quite like. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, that's that interesting. Cool. That Do you have really any cool. thoughts or or anything like that on the Naomi Osaka saga? As I said one night at a dinner table, which my dad found yeah. funny. <laughs> I like that. Um, yeah, I. Um, this is an interesting one because I'm. Um, I can see, I can see both sides. And I think that, um, I think that from a media perspective, um, it's, it's obviously inhibiting of, of what their job is and et cetera. Um, and the only point that I'd have from that point of view is, um, you know, this, like obviously Naomi is a mega athlete, um, um, earns so much money. Um, it's, it's essentially part of her job to, to front the media um and you know the the media funds funds the competition as well um so without it um i think that you know obviously the media's value is extremely high um to the sport and in that sense i can i can understand um from a business perspective in saying that i think that somebody's mental health um and an athlete's well-being and mental health trumps trumps that for me. Um, I don't think you can. Um, I don't. I don't think you could ignore what what she was saying um, or um, fight it with a valid argument. I just think that. Um, yeah, I just think that she had every right to step away from that um, if it was if it was affecting her mental health. One thing that like people really seem to miss mental health works in really strange ways. So you can be on the field playing your sport or tennis. And then as soon as you're done, the anxiety can kick in and it can be really strange. And you know, I would say on the field, it's more important than behind the scenes or doing a press conference afterwards. And so Naomi is continuing to impress, but just, in between games, she just something's going on. But correct. I remember seeing as well. I just feel so impressed with Naomi in so many ways because when she first Serena, how many years ago, and that whole debacle yeah, happened, yeah, and she's yeah. just there. She's very yeah. shy and soft spoken. It goes, oh, aren't you adorable? I feel so good for you. Like yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I I agree. I um I've been a I've been a big fan of her um from when she you know started getting really big. Um, so yeah, I think I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and I sort of like when I relate it to how sometimes how I feel about those, that that sort of stuff. I'm sort of like yeah, like fronting. Um, like I love having these like sort of informal conversations. Like they're my favorite. Absolutely, um, yeah. But it's still like yeah, it's the it's the conversations may maybe to journalists or what you've just got to be careful about what you're saying and um and that sort of thing that I don't really enjoy uh, and I might get a bit of anxiety before doing them um so when yeah I mean when I when I think about it that way I just commend her on pulling the pin on it and maybe leading the way in um in for athletes to do so also, with like sport interviews, like straight after yeah. games or matches, I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of shit. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. I do you reckon they're just like repetitive and like you get nothing out of them? Well, not only that, but you know, they're done playing a game. They've run tens of kilometers because I remember they did a study on Carlson one year in um, mid two thousands. And it was something like midfielders were running something like upwards of 24 kilometers a game, Mm. which is Mm. crazy to me. Um, Yeah. The the physical exhaustion in AFL and the level they have to be is unreal. And so, but they're obviously tired afterwards. And so they're like, yeah, it was good. Oh, Dusty was playing Ripper, stuff like that. And it's like, okay, I've heard this over and over and over again. I agree. I reckon <laughs> give them give them a little bit, yep. <laughs> then you can talk to them. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's it's. Um, I think you you might be in another world after you've run that much. Uh, can't say I run that much in it in a game. Um, but no, you're pretty good. Exhausted. I'm sure yeah. you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let my let my numbers do the talking. So. <laughs> How long did you play for Collingwood? Yep. So I drafted to them in 2018, played. So I was there for two seasons. Um, and then I came to the Bulldogs in 2020. Yep. Yeah, right. Um, is there a lot of moving around, I guess, in AFLW compared to AFL? Yeah, it's a good question. Um because I think that there's a couple of parts to the answer. Um, in comparison to the men's, I think that pretty similar um, in terms of how many trades happen. Um, but the spanner that gets thrown in to our competition at the moment is that there's still teams to get to come into the competition. Um, so, for example, we're going to get I think we might get Port Adelaide, um, Hawthorne, and maybe Essendon come into the competition next year. Oh, well, how um, many teams are there in the competition? Yeah, so there's 14 at the moment, and we're still missing four. Um, Wait, 14? The plan is to get them in. So there's 14 at the moment, yep. And then there's four still to come. And Hawthorne and Essendon don't have... I'm so yeah. I'm so yeah. shocked by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hawthorne, Essendon, Port Adelaide, and Sydney—all four big clubs. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And why don't they have teams? <sighs> it's a funny. It's one. a weird I behind think, the scenes um, thing, is it? Or yeah, yeah. I think so. I think, um, I think. Oh, well, the first point is I. I don't think the AFL wanted to have all 18 teams in at the same time, um, just because in terms of consuming and the audience, there was, there's not enough to um, fuel it. Um, but now that there's there's a rolling um, fan base, um, I think that they're more confident that, um, you know, there'll be crowds and there'll be enough um, people coming to the games and stuff. Um it's actually a very interesting point because a question that my dad had, so this is from David, my dad. Um, AFLW cool. is, is it self-sufficient or is it still funded? Um, funded by, do you, do you know, like funded by who do you think? I, uh, either the teams. Um, okay, so you mentioned that there's less of an audience and so... The, the revenue mm. coming in, I don't know even how to compare it to yeah. um, AFL, um, but yeah. is, it, is it still mainly, is it profiting? So, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I, you'd, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd have to look properly into that, but um, yeah, it, it would be um, because our games this year were ticketed um, for the first time. Um, so we're definitely funded by the AFL. Um, a lot comes through for us from the AFL, um, to the club. So essentially we are paid by, by the AFL. Um, so money gets given 
to the club, then it goes to us. Um, and yeah, so we are funded by the the AFL in that sense. I'm not sure um, if we require more than the revenue that we're making, um, or whether they yeah whether they exceed um, that and eat into other areas of where they find their money. I'm not sure. It's um, tricky because but, it's given it's still quite a new um, venture. It's hard to tell how yeah. valuable yeah. Um, AFLW players are. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's super. Yeah, it's still obviously in its in its infancy. So um, I think that for the next few years, there might be um, money pulled from areas. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I guess and from my mum. Hi, Sally. Um, <laughs> hey, Sally. Um <laughs> She wants to really know, so my mum works in HR and she's currently working for mm. the Rebels um, rugby team cool. and she's worked in soccer or football for those potential overseas people. Um, fascinated with sport and knows a lot about the behind the scenes actions and things like that and probably knows yeah. people that you might work with or work under. Um, yeah, yeah. She wants to know, do you have access to the same amount of access that AFL players have or is it different? Um, I'd imagine it was... <laughs> I'll answer it this way. I'm actually not quite sure how it works <laughs> um, at the Bulldogs yet, um, only because I've been there in the COVID time. So it was all a bit messy in terms of like, you can't go in there until it's deep cleaned after the boys kind of thing. Um, so it, that was a variable. Um, but if I answer that question from when I was at Collingwood, um, the, in my first season, the access to the facilities and, um, and et cetera was, was really cool. Um, it was really good. I could basically go there whenever I wanted um and use use ice bars use the gym um get in the pool whatever i wanted um just as long as i wasn't like getting in the way of a session or whatever for the boys uh, which is fair enough um but then the boys would usually be out by about anywhere between three and five so that was often when a lot of the, the girls came in anyway um just so that they weren't stepping on anyone's toes um from that sense. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty much whenever you want, come in, do what you want. Um, but then the funny thing is in my second year at Collingwood, that changed pretty quickly. Um, and instead we were given blocks of time. We were allowed to come in rather than come whenever. Um, and those times were either before the men started their day or after the men's started their day, uh, finished their day. Um, so, so it felt yeah, pretty, two different, two it felt different. pretty, you know, fair and equal, but yeah. it still had to be second fiddle to what the oh. men were up to. Correct. Is that upsetting? That, that is a, uh, yeah, for me it is. Yeah. Because, um, I think the only way that, we get, we get demanded to get better all the time for the, the, the competition does. And I think that the only way that that's going to happen is if you are giving us fair access to um, facilities to make us better. Right. So, so the, so the facilities are the same. You have your gyms, your pools, your um, ice baths. Yep. I'm guessing. So you have nutritionists, you have, um, dietitians, all these other people who are helping you with that sort of stuff. Is it yep. the same for the boys? Did are you using the same nutritionist? Do you have a different team? Um, so we have a different different team. So the whole the whole thing is different in terms of your um, arms broken. Um, uh, I am honestly um, yes. Um, I have had shoulder surgery um, about five weeks ago now. Um, oh my goodness! So, I didn't um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I just I forget about it to be honest. Um, 
but yeah, just had a few little injuries <laughs> throughout the season, so had to get it fixed up after. Oh well, that's that's good. Anyway, um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, so the so the whole um, in terms of personnel and staff are completely different. So um, we might get the only people who we might get um, who do some boy stuff and some girl stuff is like um, maybe like a few of the trainers. So like the water, the water carriers um, and maybe um, some leadership, leadership um, people in leadership as well. Right. Is there much interaction between um, the boys and the, and your team? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Um, I can't tell, again, at the Bulldogs, I can't tell if it's a COVID thing or not. I can't imagine it would be. Um, but at Collingwood, there was really minimal. Um, and, I, yeah, I, prob- I do think that that's an area um, that has a lot of work to go. Um, just just to create, I don't know, create a sense of belonging to the club and, um, you know, a sort of, united um it's environment v- it's a very very interesting point because technically it is two different competitions but you're one club yeah. you your Correct. wins for afl are wins for you guys too and yeah i don't know how recognized this is but i really feel like high achievements and wins in aflw should reflect nicely on the men's team as well it they should complement each other they should lift each other up really and 100 percent. yeah you're right i couldn't agree more um, um i find so yeah, it's bulldogs interesting. it's interesting so you your covid year would have been more interesting than a lot of other people did you move around a lot or were you mostly yeah. isolated i was so i i was mainly isolated so um the thing is with us is that our because our season runs from late Jan, early Feb until about late April, early May, um, it meant that our season was sort of cut when COVID was really starting to ramp up. Um, so this is another point um to note is that our season we were playing first week of finals i believe um and then they just cut the season and said no more games no more um there won't be a winner there will not be um we're not awarding a winner this season you're done um that's really i think the boys played might have played (laughs) yeah and so obviously they did anything to get that men's competition up and running um but well, look, the, the, the reality yeah, of that is that's where the, the, yeah. the money comes from, unfortunately. Um, oh, yeah. Even if you don't like, as in Victoria especially, even if you don't really follow AFL, mm. you're hearing about it anyway. It's just coming to you. And so yeah. it's, you know, it's the third form of government, really. You've got, you know, ScoMo, Dan Andrews, <laughs> or his team, sorry, Dan Andrews isn't back yet. Um and then you've got yeah, AFL. Um, damn, that's so annoying. You must have been so gutted. Yeah, it was. Um, I was just gutted for the competition more so, or the the other teams who were going to go ahead and have a finals campaign. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, I was gutted for more of like the the gender equality side of things. Yeah, right. Um, AFL is really interesting with how they proceed in, um, you know, approaching different things. So AFLW, huge strides. Just in general, it's a huge stride. You've, as you've mentioned, there's things yeah. to work on. They have. I watched the um, Adam Goods documentary recently, and in terms of media, how easy it is for different people to spin words and ideas to fit agendas. And that's going to be, I reckon our kids will ask us about, 
um, Adam Goods because I just find it one of the most upsetting things ever when the first incident with the 13-year-old girl and his press conference the next day, how he's like, look, she's 13, she's still growing, she's been surrounded by bad mm. people, she still has the opportunity to learn and change. And then people years down the track yeah. were like, he scrutinised this young woman and stuff like that. Goes, oh, come on, guys. Yep. Um, yeah, he's, it's, I know, I know. I, um, who are your AFL heroes, right, that, actually? That Would he be one of them? To, um, I, no, I don't think so. Just because he, I, he was in Sydney. I didn't have any attachment to Sydney. Oh, fair um, enough. I Who did you go for growing bit, up? I was, yeah, I was probably a little bit young. I was a Richmond girl. Oh, Richmond nice. Girl. Yep. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, my hero is probably, um, Matthew Richardson. Um, I loved, loved watching Richo. Um, and then probably more recently, um, I love watching Dusty Martin, um, go about it. Uh, there's this um, compilation called he's... Decade of Dusty. It is incredible. Oh, send that to me, please. And you, you can um, see it. Um, yeah, he's... his change over time. Cause he was a little bit skinnier than what he is now. And he didn't have all the tattoos. And so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's um, I reckon, I reckon if he wins another Brownlow, there's no argument for who the greatest of all time is. It's got to be him. Yeah, right. He's a very yeah interesting athlete in the terms where, as a person, he seems a bit. His interviews, I would say, notoriously aren't that great. Him accepting Norm Smith medals. It, it, I don't know how to describe it. You did English language, right? Yeah, we're in the same yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so if we were to yeah, we analyze it a little bit, it's sort of like yeah. there was something. There's something weird about how he does speaking, and I. It's not that he's anything, think, but is yeah. I think that yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. He's very interesting to listen to. I think that um, he. It, for me, it feels the whole time he's talking, he feels like that he's like wants to get it over and done with it. Like he doesn't want to do it, and he's just talking for the sake of it. Yeah, wait, wait for his mental health problems to come surface, like Naomi Osaka, and oh see God. how everyone supports him and will. See, it's so interesting, so interesting. Yeah, that like you don't have to agree to do any media as an AFL player, um, but. Yeah, and everyone just just goes, oh yeah, like Dusty, Dusty doesn't do interviews, whatever. Mm. And all of a sudden, you're gonna scrutinize um poor Naomi. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you're the only AFLW player I know of, and I know you because you went to school together. And yeah, I feel I feel embarrassed by that, truly, because. I'm learning a lot from you now and it's there's clearly a lot more to do and a lot more to happen. I think actually in a general level, just so I guess people can be a little bit more thoughtful, who are we looking out for at the moment in AFLW? Like coming up? Because you're off season. Are you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, off season at the moment. So our season will get going in December. Excellent. And are they doing anything differently this season? Are they so they're adding more teams or they're just to clarify or they're thinking of it? Not this yeah, so so not this season. Next season. So I think twenty twenty two um there will be a few more teams brought in. Whether it's two or four, I'm not sure. Excellent. Um what do you do you know what? I'll ask you something fun now. Um, I do a bit of a Google search on the guests I have on and I look into it. And I, you on YouTube, you're, you're quite the personality, Katie, I should say. <laughs> you're, you're very fun to listen to. Uh, we talked about it briefly off camera, but, you know, you fronted our formal video. Great job, by the way. Absolutely. Um, 
And thank you. One of my um Yeah, sorry. You go. No, I was just gonna say one of my um proudest moments. Oh yeah. <laughs> um and I guess what I'm curious about is I'm surprised you haven't been picked up by mainstream or anything like that because wouldn't it be a really cool, fun personality that gets people more involved in AFLW, theoretically? <laughs> um, yeah, I can see. I can see where this question is coming from. I think that um, the AFLW um, media department don't do a bad job in this area. Um, they there are some really good personalities doing this sort of stuff at the moment. Um, so there's a, I've got a teammate of mine, um, Bonnie too good. She's, um, she's hilarious. Um, larger than life sort of character, um, who is also very impressive behind the mic. Um, so she's had a few gigs, um, doing, I think she, she had a gig at the, um, all Australian men's ceremony. So she was, um, out there um, doing a doing a men's um, men's awards night, which was really cool. Um, and she's also done lots of little, um, it's more like um, just sort of informal, like funny, um, funny sort of clips. Um, so that was the thing I saw. You did a vlog um, of your trip to Adelaide or something like that, and playing there. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It was so, really good. So did no, you that do fun. that all yourself? I, um, yeah. Nah. So pretty much all I had to do was um was just film the trip and film whatever I wanted, and then the media department chopped it all up and put it together. Yeah, that's 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 cool to an extent, but not nothing. No shade on the media team, but it's not you, and you're just filming it then sending it off. You're probably not like they're not giving you revisions or anything like that. Nah, no, nah, the, the, um, no, nah, the thing is with that one's like, <laughs> I don't know. They risk the, they risk of me putting in something that shouldn't be in there kind of oh, thing. Oh, okay. I can see what um, that, I see what you mean. Yeah. 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 So they're, they're upholding the brand image, but I'm not really a, entirely across kind of thing. Like from a common sense point of view, I'm across obviously, but not from a, um, specific perspective yeah right you should keep keep doing them because it's funny it's interesting and yeah yeah no it's fun because i I think because if you're you're playing in the field um, can be inspirational and cool but if people see behind the scenes that the eight these aflw athletes are having fun and get along really well that will also get people into it i think at least they'd get me into it 100 percent Hundred percent. It's so funny. Um, our it's so funny. Sometimes we'll like be at <laughs> at training and um and like one of the girls will like one of the funnier girls will <laughs> come up to you and like ask you like a weird question and you're like you're like like what the, like why the fuck did they ask me that <laughs> um and and then and then you look down and you're and they're like mic'd up or something. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. So they do like little got one of these yeah, on like little mic'd up sessions, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the little, one of the little ones, and they're like, they're like, <laughs> like, <you're> like, gotcha. <laughs> um, so, nah, those those little like funny sort of um gigs are like they're they're good. I really like them. I tell you what, though, I was um. I've thought about this episode longer than others just because I screwed it up and delayed it a week. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) Kitchen Nightmares is making its run through my YouTube feed again. And, you know, it's very interesting to see. I find reality TV very interesting. Now, I thought about for a moment an AFLW behind the scenes reality TV. Uh, That could be pretty cool. But the problem I instantly thought of is they're just going to get the producers in and chop it all up to make it look like people arguing and then it doesn't actually look like a fun, cohesive team. So I was like, cool, oh wait, reality of that situation? Probably not. 
I think the. Yeah. Um, I like this idea. I I think that I think that this idea has some um, has something. As an um, idea, yeah. Under it, like it's like it's it's good. Um, uh, copyright passion yeah, right, to right. Joe.com, like... uh, Joe Media Group. You know that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Get that one out of the way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you're right. I've just uh, producers very notorious for uh, making their own characters um, via editing. Um, I had um two other guys from Logo so, Masters on, and they I were mean, talking about you that. Could do it. In terms of like making their own characters. Yeah. So they they were in season one, and they were they were finalists, and they were the the young guys our our age who sort of were um yeah in the competition and best mates since they were six or whatever. Um, and so it was quite organic. Their friendship's very organic and their on-screen chemistry is organic. But mm. for a few other people, um, for example, there was a teenager and his grandmother, which I thought, that's a really cool mm. team. And it yeah, very, cool. they very much wanted the grandmother to be more elderly and delicate and yeah. a little bit slower. Yeah. But... For all yep. we know, she could have been like sixty three or something like that, and still kicking it. So, like, hundred percent, hundred percent. I want to be that grandmother um, when I grow up. <laughs> I forget, I forget your name. Sixty three, still kicking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but you should. You need to keep up the online personality up somehow. Obviously, you've got your media team to consult with. You've got your team management and whatnot, yada, 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 uh, the people on college shirts signing all the forms, making your life better. But you um, you and uh, Bonnie should do a podcast. Why not? If she's funny, you're funny. Yeah, that's – yeah, that it's um, it's funny because um, she Bonnie, – Bonnie's looking into it. Bonnie's going to um, – I mean, I hope I'm not revealing anything, but um, – She's definitely had the idea for for a little while now, um, and I hope she um, she you know takes it takes it into her own hands and um, does something with the show. I mean, I think for, for me that might be something um, I might do in the future, just <laughs> when I'm not as busy. Um, like like I don't like you sound really busy, Joe. I don't know how you like. Oh, wait, now I am so yeah. To, like, to what you're doing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm like, it's such a big commitment. Like, this is like, you do the research, you like got to get the people. So, in the okay. Started, you make like... it, you make it sound more glamorous than it really is for me. I, I reckon I looked yeah, you up for okay. two yeah. minutes and then, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, no, that's fair enough. I, I am is trusting, even... I'm trusting a lot of this show and how it comes across in my ability to talk to people just in general i think i'm pretty good yeah, at it yeah. and um so that's how i'm and like luckily enough i am and thank you it's really nice of you to say that as well um yeah no of course i am um, when you messaged me i was like um i was like oh that would be like so fun like i reckon i reckon joe's like definitely got the personality for that stuff just um like remembering how um we got along in school and stuff um and it's so funny because i was like to the to the same a couple of the girls like tara um tara andrews sienna ducini um tamara antonucci i was like to them oh like joe's just asked me to do this podcast like how cool is this and they're like oh my god but you have to do it like that'll be so fun and i was like of course i'll do it like um i think it'll be a really really good chat so um yeah, I'm. I'm glad that you've um you've undertaken this this podcast game. I'm glad that I'm still friendly with more women than I thought I was. Awesome. <laughs> I gotta reach 100%, out. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. That's awesome. So you said you're really busy and you're off season. What happens off season? Yeah. Um. So. Pretty much what happens off season is that um, 
well, firstly, our season – so our season ends in um, May-ish. So um, uni's back at this stage. Um, so oh, I'm you're studying. Uni. Congratulations. Um, and then I'm doing – thank you. I'm doing um, professional communication. Um, so I guess a little bit of media stuff like you. Um, so that's just – but it's plus like PR um, advertising. Yeah, so my course is media and communication, um, and so great. I definitely have touched on a couple yeah, of those subjects. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so we ha- certainly have some crossover in what we're studying. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing that full time, um, plus um, just like part time, like casual work. Um, Got to get some money in somehow. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm just doing. Um, a Wait. bit of like freight handling um, out of the factory with some. You're still casually earning. You have to do a worker side off season. Yeah. So the thing is with us, we're part time, uh, and the money we're getting just is not enough to to keep us afloat. Basically, that's really upsetting. That's, 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 that's yeah it's shit sorry I keep swearing am I allowed to swear on this yeah totally fine I think I swore first before you I should have mentioned that before and that great damn it come on <laughs> AFL yeah it's I know better than this so annoying um be- look, oh, we don't so have to get into numbers this. but like um, I feel so ashamed because look Matt Rao certainly wouldn't have to yeah. Pick up a casual job oh, off no. season. No, no, no. Um, and you've played two it's years. Probably more than about. You. I'll, I'll, yeah. So if I put it in a numbers numbers sense, um, a first year, a first so a first round draft pick, um, such as Marrow, um, would be earning. Like, like, eighty, eighty k more than what a first, first round, um, girl would be getting. Yeah. Eighty k. Well. So it's heaps. The gap is heaps. That's yeah, eighty k more. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Well, if, at least. Now, if I was my age and earning, someone's earning a low six figure salary, right? The top players. I'm, yeah. I'm yep. implying from that. So if I was around our age and earning that, I'd be pretty happy and pretty stoked. And so they'd probably be able to be okay throughout the year. But I'm just so – that's so upsetting and gutted. Like, do you live by yourself? Do you have to pay rent? Nah, so I'm just with my family still, which is great. Um yeah, which is really easy for me. But how so, many players um, would be living by themselves, like, still looking yeah, to make which is rent? That's what I was gonna say. Um, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, which is what I was gonna say. Like, I'm fortunate enough that I'm based here, um, and so they've got sort of got no reason to move out while I'm, you know, earning and studying. But lots of girls, might, like, I'd say, yeah, like. Almost majority of the girls would be would be living to make a rent, um, and whether that's with another full time job, m- most of them have other full time jobs. Like I'm probably just because I'm studying and stuff, I'm doing casual work. But like girls go to work all day and then come to training at night, kind of thing. Yeah, so they're you're working as hard as the men. You've got yeah. Uh, that's a weird statement. Um, it's hard to properly verify that. You're working... How about this? You're working very, very hard. You're wanting to put on a show. Yep. You've yep. got all these yep. supports and people who want to see you. Yep. But it's just strange. It's still not verified in a way. Like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's look, exactly the, it. it um, it's the same thing with a lot of new industries. The more money will come over time. So I'm mm. sure. 
Yeah, correct. The the young That's the thing. The the sixteen year old like you from five years ago who's looking to still be playing in FLW, should she she still wants to play it, right? She should still be ambitious and trying and wanting yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, like, for me, at, well, from, at that age, it was sort of like, I don't really care about the money, like, whatever. Um, but... You enjoy playing AFL, right? Just I, so I can... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Which is what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm not there for the money. Like, no, I, I love playing... Um, in the at the top level, like with my mates and going to training, and I love I love the whole, everything that comes with it. Um, but I just think that <laughs> for that the output for um, what comes back to the players is just simply not enough. Um, the output exceeds um, what we get back. Are there uh, organisations trying to help with this, or? Um, Can I yes do anything? No, I think that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just tell me what I can do. Yeah. Um, nah, so I think that like a lot of it is player driven. Um, so there's a lot of like, um, like initiatives behind the scenes that are sort of like, um, like uh, about the gender pay gap. Um, and um, also just creating awareness for it as well. Um, but it's just a continual, I think it's just for a little while, it's going to be a continual battle. Mm. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just like still a bit upset by that. Like I, I wasn't expecting it yeah. to be 100% equal. And so I, I didn't have these expectations yeah. or anything like that of um, – Anything like that. In fact, I would be probably as shocked to hear if the Dusty of AFLW was getting paid the same as Dusty. I would have been like, okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, correct. Yeah. But, you know, what, what are you wanting to see in the future for AFLW? I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. 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 Um, well, for me, it's just getting it to a stage where you can be a full-time athlete, um, and it is, and it is the same as the boys is basically the goal for me. Um, uh, sorry, not the same as the boys. I just, sorry, equal as the boys. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Just like have a, have a, um, pathway that is, um, clear um the and girls can come into the competition more ready um and then they can transition straight from school into that full-time athlete capacity not not ready what do you what do you mean by that sorry um so by that i mean um so this is so if i if i talk about it from my perspective um coming through the pathway system it was sort of like they were still developing like the game instead of um like um athletes um like athlete development in terms of um your like capacity to your fitness so like your strength and conditioning basically um so they were fo- more focused on developing um, how you how you could play instead of the athlete you are. Um, so for me, it was sort of like, well, yes, I need to be working on my game, but I also need to be getting athlete ready for the competition that I'm going to be playing in. Um, I'm going to be playing against women. I'm I'm a kid at the moment. Um, I need to get in the gym. I need to get up to the fitness levels. Um, and that that I think that at the moment is still sort of ignored um, with the girls. Um, because they're trying to develop the game, which, which I understand um, to a degree, um, but at the same time, it's again a time and resources thing. Um, because I know that the boys are on proper programs um, when they are eighteen, um, that are that are building them up to be 
um, to transition straight into the AFL, um, like strength and conditioning um, landscape. So, yeah, they need – because I'm sure there's – again, I'm just speedballing here. Probably for, you know, 16- and 15-year-olds, there's programs you can apply for that will help you eventually um, – in terms of draft experience and stuff like that, it's like you can play for your club and then you'll have, I don't know, a representative yeah. who might come by and say hi, see how things are going, and then you'll get have a, a little, call from yeah. someone, from your coach being like, hey, this guy wants you to come and do X, Y, Z. Yeah. But, yeah, so, yeah, damn. I'm going to make an effort. I'm, yeah. When the season comes around, I'm going to go to a game and see you and – you have my 100%. recorded, published, documented, um, uh, you know, I don't know, I forget the word. but Verbal agreement. A verbal agreement, yeah. I will go, I will support you, I will post everything. Right. 100%. It's so fascinating. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so interesting. Like, there's, there's like, like, obviously I'm not um, attacking what you know the fact that you've come from little knowledge to um now knowing but i think that like there are so many people like you are like mind blown or like what happens in our competition um which is like i I think it's cool because i think it shows that like this is how we grow the game like there is work to do with those people um which is great because this is because this is how it works. Now you say you're going to come to the game, and blah blah. blah. Um, and yeah, I just think that it's it's good. It shows upside. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I guess moving forward a bit, you know, you're only recently in Bulldogs. Uh, I don't really have a massive mm. plan for the future myself. You're studying um, communication. Moving forward, you're looking to yeah. keep doing. AFLW for as long as you can. What's what's the yeah? Do you have yeah, any idea? So I guess that's the plan. Um, no, I mean like you're right. I don't have plans either. Um, but yeah, the plan is to play for as long as I can, provided my body will let me, and provided I still enjoy what I'm doing. Um. So yep, that's, that's what well, might give you there. an edge, however, um, um, over other people mm. and other athletes is. So these boys being taken straight out of high school into AFL, they don't have a degree to fall back on or anything like that when things go sideways. And the money, yeah. the money might be yeah, nice correct. whilst they're young, but you know that might last until they're forty-two. Yeah, yeah, and then they've got to transition. Um, which is usually you hear stories about um, about lots of the boys who might find themselves a little bit lost when their career comes and... to an end. Um, but yeah, so you're right in that sense. I think um, pretty um, pretty lucky that I'll have a grasp of what the actual world is like, um, which is great. Um, so I'm hopefully I'll jump into something that's related to my degree, um, and then I might even go back and study some more just while I can. Um, and yeah, like, like you said, no grand plans, but yeah, in terms of football, that's, that's it. You're literally kicking so many goals. It's so awesome to hear that you're doing well. I've learned so much. Katie, where can people find you? I'm going to, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. Is that okay? Uh, (laughs) Sorry. I kind of just threw that on you. Yeah, yeah, of course. (laughs) No, that's it. (laughs) That's okay. I like abrupt endings. Let's let's just. No, it's, sorry. It's very um, rude of me as a host. Um, is there anything else you wanted to mention or talk about? Um, no, like that's. I think we killed, that was a really good chat. Um, it sounds like um, you learned a few things, which is awesome. Um, and I, I learned a few things as well. Um, definitely about um the topics we discussed. So. I'm I'm pretty pretty sound with that conversation. I'm gonna try and get you back before season starts. I think that'd be a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah, guys, follow Katie. 
She's awesome. Um, yeah. Where can people find you? Um, Instagram's the main one. So at Katie Lynchy is my username. Um, and then yeah, don't don't bother with any of my other handles. Um, <laughs> just have I definitely just have Twitter to um look at other content rather than create my own. Yeah, um, no, fair enough. So yeah, Instagram's the main one. I think I've done five tweets on Twitter. Twitter scares me. I'm just like... Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. you got to be careful with Twitter. You really do. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, everyone. I'll see you next week. <laughs> it's been three weeks since I've uploaded. <laughs> yeah. I'm so inconsistent. <laughs> I'm going to try. Even though with this new job, I'm going to try. That happens. All yeah. right. Bye-bye.